You were on the team. You rolled everybody. It must have been so much fun. They were my number one team. She went with the 01 Hurricanes. Help me out here. Oh, man, yeah. The 01 Hurricanes. I know some of them guys, so much respect, but not not close. Not close to us in 95. Uh, I've had several conversations about this team. Um, the last one was a, probably like five, six years ago. Actually, longer than that. And we were visiting a friend in Vegas. And long story short of it, he's like, you know, talking trash because he's a volunteer and he's talking trash about when we played him in the Orange Bowl. And if Peyton Manning wouldn't have had his knee hurt, he would have played <laughs> just like this. And he's like, man, y'all, you know, I don't even think y'all are the best team in college football. And I'm like, what year? He's like, 95 and 97, all that. I'm like, well, 95, I believe we were the best team in college football history. I think at that moment, it was a poll that came out around that time. He And I was like, just Google it. And he Googles it on his phone. And it said, and it actually starts the line offset led by freshman Amon Green. <laughs> <laughs> the, was great. the night team was you know, voted the uh, best college football team in college football history at that time. It was like 2014, almost 10 years ago. It was hilarious. Okay, so Amon, obviously you guys were incredible. And, you know, yeah. the 01 Hurricanes team, though, it was just so many guys who, you know, you went on to have this ama amazing NFL career, but it's not like your team wasn't littered with guys who end up having decade long careers who might be the best at their position, even in the pros, like an Ed Reed or something like that. True, true. So the collection of NFL talent, I think might've been clouding my judgment a little bit or informing my opinion a little bit. What made that 95 Nebraska team so great considering you had a lot of guys who went to the NFL, but that Miami team had guys who went to the NFL multiple first team all pros stuff like that yeah we, we had the same we had a few guys first round first team all pros in terms of defensive players and a few offensive players here and there but what made that college football team different from everybody was the fact that we averaged 50 points a game i think that's a low number for a basketball team <laughs> um we averaged 500 yards on the ground every game rushing and i believe nick same his first year at michigan state we beat them 50 to 10, and I had 110 yards rushing and a touchdown, and I was the backup. <laughs> Lawrence Phillips had over 200 yards and two touchdowns. Jay Sims had over 100 yards and one touchdown. It's like three running backs, basically, between them had 400 yards rushing, along with Tommy Frazier and, then, uh, and the offense. And then our defense, they were number one, and we barely could move the ball in practice. Coach Osborne would ask Coach Charlie McBride, our defensive coordinator, can you, you know, let off the, let the boys, you know, let us breathe for a little bit. He's like, he's like no, y'all got to earn every yard, even in practice. And so that was what we made us better. And we basically couldn't wait till Saturday because we knew we could finally move the ball against Kansas or Kansas State or Colorado because that defense, it was a nightmare to practice against. Well, I mean, obviously we know since what has happened to Lawrence Phillips has had a really kind of a tragic life uh, in Correct. prison. Can, any stories to to let people know who don't know about Lawrence Phillips about how great he was and what what he was like off the field because I imagine it was quite interesting. Oh yeah, it was very very interesting, and I say very heartwarming for myself because it started right away when I got on campus because I come in, I'm a USA Today All American, a Parade All American, and instead of being a guy that could say, "Oh man, he's I'm the incumbent back, I'm not going to help you out," you got to learn. Like I had to learn or whatever. No, he takes me under his wing day one. And I remember we we had this viaduct that we went to go run. It was basically an elevated one, like a it simulated a hill. And he said, no, you run it with me. You sit and you standing next to me. You're going to run against me, freshman. Let's go. And so every time we were in the weight room together, walking to class, we, he would pull, grab me and say, hey, let's talk football or let's, how you doing? You know, so he basically took me under his wing and basically was another brother of mine you know, like my brothers, you know, away from campus. I had family members and he started, I say a big thing that one more story, that, that something that I say helped me out a lot was when he got suspended for those six games, he still obviously was a student. So he had to attend classes. And so one of my paths to my class, one of my classes was around his path. And so we would meet up in those six weeks and talk about every opponent, Kansas, Kansas State, Missouri. He would tell me about the, how the linebackers played you know, how the defensive line play, how how the coaches would get us ready for them. So he basically mentally prepared me along with having practice, 
watching film with Coach Solich and Coach Osborne and my offensive line, things like that. So even though he couldn't be at the practice field, he could still, he basically took a time to walk with me and, and it helped me out during my freshman year during those times I was able to start for the team while he was gone in his absence. I, and what went wrong with Lawrence Phillips? I, I, the, when he was playing, there was a, a lot of reporting, the legal troubles, and it just, yeah. unfortunately, he died in prison. Uh, yeah. it, it was a, just a tragic life. Yeah, it started, unfortunately, when he was younger. It was something where he had a tragic, I say, childhood growing up. You know, it was things where his mother, I believe, adopted him at 13. Um, I don't know if it was financial. I don't know if it was just out of have given him a better life, maybe. But whatever that situation had happened, it hurt him and it stood with him. And so he had a lot of trust issues with a lot of people. And so, you know, when we got to co- when he got to college and the thing happened with his girlfriend, same thing that was trust issues arising between his girlfriend, teammates, because that was involved, that situation happened with Scott Frost. And so that was kind of the domino effect and just continued was going on because Coach Osborne tried to do his best on campus to help Lawrence, give him support. We did our, as well as his teammates, you know, to talk to him, to, you know, make sure to let him know that he we had his back. He had support just like he was giving everybody else support. And so I think when he was on campus, he had his best support system around him. But then once he got drafted to the NFL, as we know, and as, as I know, as a pro, NFL teams are not going to be there for, for babysitting. They're going to not be there to stand and watch and make sure this guy doesn't stay out of trouble. That player has to do it on their own. So that's where I knew, even before I even got to the NFL, I knew it was going to be tough because he didn't have anybody like us around in terms of his teammates and that coaching staff. Amon Green is joining us, four-time Pro Bowler, national champion. We've been talking about the greatest college football teams of the last 30 years. We named as a, te- as, a as a show the 1995 Nebraska Cornhuskers, of which Amon was a star. Uh, they're number one. I did say I did the show under protest yesterday because <laughs> I thought that the 0-1 Hurricane should have had it. But honestly, you are you're changing my mind. Um, can we talk a little NFL, though, while we have you on? Because today we revealed our top five greatest NFL teams of the last mm. 30 years. So Ooh. quickly, I'll go through the list for you because this one's got some controversy on it as well. Correct. Number five, I'll go backwards order. Number five, the 1995 Cowboys. We went with the Barry Switzer team over the 93 Jimmy Johnson mm. team, which has a that's, few. That's a big detail. A, a few, yeah. many thousands of people are upset with us about that one. Um. Number a lot four. of Cowboy fans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And not Cowboy fans. Uh, 2013 Seattle Seahawks, the Legion of Boom. The number three on the list, the 1999 Rams, the greatest show on turf. All right. Number two, the 1994 San Francisco 49ers. Steve Young, Jerry Rice. Yeah, still Ricky incredible. Waters. Ricky Waters. Yeah. And yeah. number one, we put the 2007 New England Patriots. Even oh, 16 though. 16 and 0. 16 and 0, but lost to the Giants, obviously. Mm. The David Tyree helmet catch uh, will forever live in, in infamy. So Ooh. we left off the 98 Broncos, which people have been upset about. And of course, we 85 left off, Bears. Well, no, only the last 30 years. Oh, 30 years. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so 93 was our, our first was year we could off. consider. Got it. Got it. Left Ooh, off the wow. 06 Green Bay Packers. Left off the mm. 2011 Green Bay Packers. And the Ravens, too. The Ravens we left Ravens off. Had a, they had a good defense, too. Yeah. Ooh. So you got 49ers. We've got the Patriots. What do you think about the Patriots? Patriots? Can they be the number one team of the last 30 years, even if they didn't win the Super Bowl? I would say it would be a hard case because of that not winning, but a positive case going 16-0. and 0. Yep. Because I remember I was, you know, I was playing around that time, and watching that happen was, was special. And as, and as a player, you know that's a completely – and utterly hard to do and to have them do it was impressive and and obviously take their trip through the playoffs and get to the Super Bowl and just wasn't for a uh like you said shoestring catch or David Tyree helmet catch then I would say I'll say that's a good argument you know to have the Patriots up there because of the coaching staff the team you know uh I say other other fans will kind of say no because of the other the cheating habits <laughs> that were that kind of arose from around that those decades of destiny teams there that they had, but um, I would say it's a good argument to have the 07 uh, Patriots because of the I say even even the players too the players on that roster solid players Hall of Famers are on that uh that uh, uh roster. I'm on. I watch video of, of your Cornhuskers team running out of the tunnel, and I said to myself, well, this game's already over. You just see this team <laughs> run out of the field, it's over. Was there ever an NFL team? 
that, and, you know, an opponent that ran onto the field who has had so much confidence that I think teams get this era of invincibility. Did you ever run into a team like that that you said, whoa, they are just tough? Mm, every now and then, it was every other year when we played the Tennessee Titans, it they were run out and having a guy by the name of Javon Curse on that defense oh, yeah. <laughs> set the tone because during the week, we would watch game film between the lineman and I and my fullback, William Henderson, we would ask each other, who's going to block him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Amon, you, like, I could, I'm fast enough, but I'm not as big <laughs> as he is. You know, the old lineman's like, I'm not as fast as you, so what's, we got a problem here. So we knew that defense, they're de- facing their defense was going to be an issue just because of Javon Curse of him coming off the edge, giving run support, and rushing the quarterback. So those couple of years when they were playoff teams as well, when we would face them and it was usually on Monday night football and it never turned out very good <laughs> for us or a Sunday night game because of Javon curse coming off that left or right side, whenever they would switch them around. Oh man. I'm on green is our guest. Just keeping them for another minute or two. And thank you so much for carving out the time for us, the four time pro bowler national champion. So we look back and you did play against the 98 Broncos twice when you were early in your career in Seattle. Yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot to ask you to remember every game, but was there anything special you do remember about that team? We didn't put them on the list. You also played yeah. against some really great Colts teams as well, which did not make the list. Correct. Uh, so, yeah, I remember my rookie year, 1998, playing against the Broncos in the Kingdom, and I saw how efficient that team offensively ran the ball or function as an offense. So between run and pass, because they have John Elway, you know, you know, long in the tooth, but still throwing – the pass really accurate and very strong. And then you have Terrell Davis running the ball. And I remember seeing him run down to our sidelines and he barely looked like he was breathing or giving effort, <laughs> but he was full speed. So I'm just like, yeah, they, 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 that team. I think they're going to take another one this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on, by the way, I had to talk Maggie out of the 2000 Oklahoma Sooners. I just want to say, I mean, obviously Oklahoma cannot be on this list. That's where we're going to start there. No, no. The only, only, only reason, only I say I'll tip my hat to a couple of good guys I know. Um, um, Aaron Rukowski, fullback, that was there in the last uh, ten years, and then Torrance Marshall was my teammate here in Green Bay. He actually was on that 2000 team and got drafted in the um, 01 draft. So Wait, was it? Shout out to those guys. Was the Oklahoma Nebraska thing still a full tilt rivalry by then '95? Or yeah, yeah, it was. It yeah. was on the way down because my freshman year. We beat them 37, 37 to nothing in Lincoln. So it was kind of on the Oklahoma side of it. It was on the way down, but then it kind of bounced back up in the, in the early 2000s and even now.